Hello and welcome everyone to Blog Investigations. I'm your instructor, Joe Senor. So let's get this copyright information out of the way. All material in this presentation is copyright 2015 by Joseph Senor and PI Mall LLC. Any reproduction in physical or electronic format is not allowed without the written permission of Joseph Senor. If you wish to use this information in a presentation of your own or in other materials, please contact me at jcenor at cibir.net. So now that we've got that done, let's go into a little area that I like to call case evaluation. Now, this is a brand new section for my classes since I'm normally the one that will take any case, and I'm sure you are as well, but here's the problem. With these new types of internet-based cases, I firmly believe that you should evaluate, in this case, a blog investigation case before you decide to take it. But you need to make sure you do this for every internet based case. You need to evaluate it and decide whether or not you will take that case on. So the following questions are ones that you should answer before you decide to take a blog investigation case. First of all, did the client provide you their full name? I've had quite a number of clients that have not done that. Did the name check out? In other words, did you Google their name to see what shows up on Google about them? Did you check it on Bing? You should always do this. Are they using some type of anonymous system to contact you? Like a anonymous email service, a proxy service, maybe a burner phone to talk to you? Here's a really interesting one. Are they directly connected to the subject? In other words, are they married to them, a family member, an employer? Because if my client is not directly connected to the subject, I really, really want to know what is the situation. And more importantly, this ties right into the very next question. Why do they need the information? Now, when they tell you why they need it, you also need to ask yourself, does their reason for needing the information seem legitimate? Because the thing is, if it doesn't seem legit, walk away there are plenty of other cases to do. Now, another one here. Are they local or remote from you? Now, with a lot of internet-based cases, they could be anywhere in the country or world for that matter. And you need to think about that. Now, local, I usually associate local to an hour or maybe two hours drive from where you are. Remote, remote to me is five hours or an airplane ride away from you. Now this next one's a double-edged sword. Are they willing to sign a contract and pay up front to start the work? On one side, that's good. That's good that they're willing to do that. On the other side, are they too eager to pay you to start doing this work? Maybe they're also thinking about adding a bonus if you finish up the work quickly. So that's something to think about. Now, here is probably the most important question there is. Do you have any uneasiness when talking with them? That is very, very important for you to look at because here's the thing. I think it is very, very important for you to conduct this type of case evaluation for any and all types of internet or cyber-based investigations. Now the thing is, the main thing that I'm always concerned with is my gut feeling. If I don't have a good gut feeling about the client, then I will not take the case because the thing is every time I've had a bad gut feeling about a client turns out my gut was right I should not have taken that case so don't make my mistake if you don't feel good about the client walk away so now that we've done the case evaluation and you're ready to actually take the case let's go into the interview process we need to do with a client now with any internet or cyber based investigation you need to make sure you conduct a really good thorough and in-depth interview of your client before you start your work. The reason is, the more information you have, the better. Pretty simple. But also the fact that the more information you have, the faster you can get to work, the faster you can find your information, the more successful you will be and the happier your client will be as well. Now, you're going to notice that in my list of interview questions that I'm going to ask the same question but in a slightly different way. I do this to make sure I'm getting the correct information from my client. 
in case they're trying to deceive me about some of the information. I'm also looking to find a way to trigger that aha moment with my client that could provide me the critical information that I need. So maybe when I ask, well, what was the blog title? That they'll go, oh, wait a minute, I just remembered something. And that's critical when they tell me the next piece of information they suddenly remembered. Now, I suggest you print out a list of the questions to take with you when you go to interview your client. More importantly, you should, not really should, you must upload a copy of these questions to your Google Drive account or Dropbox account. And by doing this, you can make sure you can always access the questions no matter where you are, as long as you have your smartphone. So let's go into the questions you need to ask your client. First and most important, what type of blog is this? Now again, I'm not asking WordPress, Hub Pages, Ghost Blog. I'm asking what type of blog. Is it a personal blog, sports blog, family blog, community blog, company blog? That's what I'm looking for here. Next, what is the URL of the blog? Now, some people will be able to answer that without a problem. They know that URL means web address. Others may not. So if they don't know what URL is, say, what is the web address of the blog? Next, how did you find out about the blog? Did you get an email? Did you just stumble across it? Did somebody tell you? Did somebody call you? When did this happen? I need to know when did you first find out about this? Was it a week ago, a day ago, a month ago, two years ago? More importantly, where were you when you found this? Now, I'm doing this because I need to find the location they were at to see if there's other additional information I can get to help me find all of this. So were you at the office? Were you in the car? Were you at home? And look at this next question. What computer were you using at the time? Was it your business computer? Your personal computer? Was it maybe a tablet, laptop, your smartphone? Because depending upon the device that was used, I could conduct a forensic image of that device and recover all of their web activity and be able to pull up the blog they were looking at immediately. Next, how long ago did this happen? Again, I'm looking for that date time. That's very, very important. Did you have anything to do with the issue? I've got to know that because that's going to give me more history I need to be looking at. Who did you talk to about this? When you found this information, did you talk to somebody? Did you text them? Did you call them? Did you email them? If so, who? Because I want to go and interview that person as well. Did you send out any emails, Facebook postings, or other information to the internet? Any social networks? Because if you did, I need to get that information and see who commented on it as well. Next, I want to ask, are you looking for any specific data? I need to know this so I know what will close this case for me. Next, what are the email accounts if known? Did you email the owner of the blog? Did they email you back? What are those emails? Did you email somebody about this? What's that email? Next, what are the dates you're looking for? Very, very different question here than how long ago did this happen? That's more when did you find out about this? What I'm looking at here are what are the dates you're looking at? The posting on the blog, what was the date of that posting? Are you looking for that exact date or the day before, the day after, the week after that? I need to know exact dates. I'm trying to put this all into very specific areas. Next, what was in the posting? What was said? What was, it, was it a picture? Was it a video? Was it sound? Was it just somebody writing something? What was it about? Who wrote the posting? What was the name that was associated to that post? Was it the blog owner? Was it a guest poster? Was it a anonymous poster? When was the posting dated? Now, I do this because with a WordPress blog, you can actually create the blog today and put in a whole bunch of postings and backdate them so now your blog looks like it's been going for a year. That's why I'm very concerned about a date issue here. Next, what was the title of the blog? Not the URL, not the web address. What was the title of the blog? 
Next question I want to ask, did you do a screen capture? A lot of people really know how to do this these days. So always ask, did you do a screen capture? Was there anything unusual about the posting? Did they say something that was very personal to you that only a few people might know about? Was there anything about certain locations or coded words, something like that? Now, next one, what about the postings above and below what you're concerned about? What, were, what was said in those postings? Because that might tie more into what I'm looking for. My next question, was this a personal blog or a hosted WordPress.com blog? So here I'm trying to find out where is this blog located at on servers? My next question, have you kept checking on the blog since then? Because I need to know if the client is messing around with the blog and posting information so I don't go chasing down a certain name knowing that it's really my client. What were the results if you kept doing this checking? Did things change? Did it go away? What? Now, more importantly, what are your plans for this information? What are you going to be doing with this? Are you going to court with this? Is this just information you just need to feel better? What is it? Next, what is your budget for this case? Because this is going to let me know how much time I'm going to be investing in this case. Next question, are you working with an attorney? Very important question here. Because if they're working with an attorney, you need to work directly with that attorney. Because then your information is protected. What result do you need in order to call this case closed? I need to know exactly what they need so I know I'm done with this case. Next one, are there any surprises I should know about? In other words, you know, did, did uh, you get involved with this person? Did you have an affair with this person? What? Next, did you hire any, anyone else to work on this case? Because I need to know, is the evidence corrupted? Next, have you posted openly for someone to work on this? Have you gone out to Craigslist, Backpage, some other website to try and get somebody to work on it for you? Does the target know you're having this investigated? In other words, did you tip your hand with this person saying, I'm going to find out who you are, I'm going to hire somebody to find you? Because again, that's a little surprise I need to know about. Are you aware of any legal issues or law enforcement issues I should be aware of? Because again, you need to know if the person you're working with is being investigated by the police. Would they tell you? Eh, probably not, but it's best to ask the question. Now, once you have all these questions answered, you should have enough background to begin your investigation. Now remember, reword some of these questions yourself, okay? Now comes the next big step. Get your client to sign the contract. Do not do anything until they sign that contract, folks. And more importantly, get your client to pay the retainer. Don't start working without some sort of payment ahead of time. Now, you have all the information that you can get from your client in order to begin the work. You have a signed contract with the client. You have a retainer from the client. Holy cow, this is amazing. You are now ready to move to the next section of the class, which is going to be on contracts and pricing. I'm going to show you how I price this out and we're going to talk about the contracts that I use. Of course, you'll need to modify them for your own state needs. Okay. Now, also, don't forget to check out www.pimall.com slash store for the latest in investigative software. And again, this is a free class from the PI Classroom. You can find out more about other classes at www.piclassroom.com and you can check out the latest software and classes on DVD at www.pimall.com store. And more importantly, I'll see you in the next module.